should police officers live in the neighborhoods that they police? Why or why not? Wow, that's a good question. Um, no, they should not. Mm. Um, I did in my first, in my beginnings, but I stayed across, I lived across the street from a woman who was a prostitute. Her son was a gang member and he would break into homes and break into cars. He knew I lived across from him. And I would see her bring Johns in the house all the time. We had a un, we had a un, we had an understanding and a respect. He knew who I was, I knew who he was. He was gonna do dirt in the neighborhood. He did all his dirt outside. But the, the uncomfortable thing was he knew where I lived at. Mm. Right? He knew, you know, there are nights I would get off from work, I would obviously change my uniform and keep my gun on me and stuff like that. So that people wouldn't know who I am. But eventually people find out. I would have to go to the store. I remember going to like Walmart and Publix. I'd always have to wear disguises, hats and everything like that, wear sunglasses because, you know, you run into these people again. You go to the mall, you run into these same people you dealt with last week. The guy you locked up, his girlfriend, they're out. Before you get off of work, you run into them. You know, I would tell my family, if you see me in my uniform out at out working, don't ever speak to me unless I speak to you first. Um, and so, cause you never know if I'm dealing with somebody looking for somebody and they see me acknowledge you and then now you become a target. I had to take myself off of social media cause you had suspects who were looking for officers and seeing where their family were and things like that, threatening them, trying to follow them around. Um, and so, no, I don't think, I think if officers live in a community, it has to be secured and gated. It has to be a police compound of sorts to where that's where officers live at. And yes, they do live in the community, but they live in this compound. But the problem is you still have to live and exercise and move around within that area, and it's dangerous. Mm. What do you do when a suspect that you arrested, they follow you back home? They find out what car you drive, they find out where you There have been officers who've been carjacked, there have been officers who've been robbed. You know, there's, there's all types, there's officers' homes have been broken into, and their equipment and weapons have been stolen. So it is very dangerous. What's the solution? Because a lot of people's argument is if you don't live in the community, then how do you, how are you attached to the community? Well, you don't have to live there to be attached. My solution based on um, my reform package that I put together, how do you work around that? When you extend the amount of time officers need to be training, you also need to be sending them into these communities to do community service. Without the uniform, without their gun, there's a certain amount of hours that they need to consistently do, not just in the academy, but also after they graduate. Community service should always be a part of their job, meaning maybe it's one day a week, right? Because now here's how my reform package looks. If, now I told you about 85% to 90% of the stuff officers are called to do, we shouldn't be doing. Unnecessary, yeah. So if you take all that away, guess what? Now they, these guys got seven days a week wide open to work. Well, one day out of those weeks, every week, one day a week, that officer should be doing mandatory community service training in the community. Whatever that looks like, they need to be there. They need to be bonded and connected to the community that they're serving. That's how you do it, and you do it consistently. It's part of the job. It's not something you did in the academy. It's not something they forced you to do. It's part of the job. Um, that's how you build that relationship. That's how you build that bond. Um, I think you cannot serve, I think you cannot serve a community if you're not attached or connected to them. You don't have to necessarily live there, but you have to understand, you have to be a part of it. Having officers do community service, even outside of work, we're talking everybody's required. Normally what police officers or police departments do now is they have maybe five officers that are part of a community service unit, and that five, their job is to do go out there, hand out candies, and kiss babies. Well, the other 99% of the officers are not required to do it. Well, that's a problem. So these five officers are there to give the impression that we are community-based. But those five officers a lot of times don't even do police work anymore. 
on, on average. They play the football and they help. It does help create a positive image. Right. But you need the officers who are doing the job to have those connections. Because just because Officer John has a good rapport with the community doesn't mean Officer Tim, Mike, Scott, you know, Tyrone, Officer Tyrone, Officer Jackson, they need the same rapport as well. Why? Because they're the ones who are going into those communities day in and day out. And they don't know the people. They live an hour away from the community they're serving. They're white and they're patrolling in a black community. You know what you need to do? Just like in school, when we were in high school, white kids sat on this table, black kids sat on this table, Asians sat on this table. You have to force them to be a part of the community they're serving. Um, people need to see their face, know who they are. They need to understand what's going on. They need to understand the nuance, the struggles. They need to understand what people are going through day and day. They need to, to mingle with the children. They need to have a connection. They need to see themselves in the people that they're serving. And so that is the answer to that problem. Um, officers would never agree being forced to live in a community because it's a safety issue. These officers have kids. Some of them are married. So, so that's why I always say, and we talked about this earlier, people bring out these ideas, but because they didn't do the job, they don't understand why officer will say, no, nah, I don't agree with that. To them, they're like, well, this is a good idea. No, no, it's not a good idea because it's a safety concern. You know, we want to sleep safe at night as well. Um, and so I think that's one of the challenges um, people don't realize it. And I think that's why it's so important to have someone like myself or other officers with experience and a creativity. Because outside of being experienced, how creative are you about solving the problem? You have to be able to think outside the box. So, you know, just as simple, I've never heard of making it mandatory for all officers to do community service. And if you're the type of officer that's like, I don't want to do that, then you're not meant to be an officer. Mm. Your job, you're called to be a servant of the people. Right. And you cannot serve people that you do not know. And that's just what it is. Mm. What is um, what's your take on gun control, or or <laughs> more specifically the abundance of guns uh, amongst citizens? Does that make police work harder, or would you prefer a world where more citizens are armed? I think there's too many guns. I think I prefer a country where citizens have an ability to protect themselves. So I'm pro um, 2A all day. I have no issues with it. I do think people get carried away, but I know that's their personal prerogative, right? So <clears throat> no question there. I have an issue with the irresponsibility of gun owners. A lot of our guns that these criminals have and young adults have, kids have, teenagers have, they have them because they steal them from gun owners, from legal gun owners. So you have illegal gun owners taking legal guns from legal gun owners. Well, that's the problem because they're irresponsible gun owners. I love guns. I think they should have them. Um, I think any form of gun control is kind of, it's, it's, it's not logical 